All right, guys, it is Sunday night, and I am Danny Williamson, and we are on part two of cardiovascular disease. This is Heart Health Month. In fact, it ends this week, and we are talking tonight lifestyle changes, supplements. Yeah, a few supplements, whatever, whatever, but we're talking lifestyle changes and testing, things you need to have your primary care provider test you for. So when you get on here, hit your heart buttons, hit your like buttons all night long. That pushes us up, you know, in the algorithm and share it with your friends. OK. All right. Tell us where you're from. All those things. All right. I am going to get started right now because I know your time is valuable. All right. So cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women in the United States. Number one, it claims one in three women. One in three women die from cardiovascular disease. Uh, one in eight women die from breast cancer. So think about that. One in three women. Absolutely ridiculous. All right. One person dies every 36 seconds from cardio cardiovascular disease in the United States. Approximately 655,000 Americans die from heart disease every year. That's ridiculous. Heart disease costs the United States about $219 billion, B as in boy, billion dollars each year. It did from 2014 to 2015. This included the cost of health care services, medicines, lost pro productivity due to death. So tonight we're going to talk about prevention. All right, prevention. What is it that we do? Tell me where you're from, all the things on here. All right, put your posts up here. Um, part one, sis, or it could be a guy, it just says Facebook user, is, is two weeks ago. So you can look there. It's on our YouTube channel. All right. And I went through all the statistics. But tonight we're going to talk about prevention. And if you already have heart disease, what can you do to start to reverse it or pull it back to where it's manageable? Maybe you have less medication. Maybe you don't. But you're going to decrease inflammation because we know people inflammation is the root of 100 percent of all chronic lifestyle disease. So you don't have to say, oh, well, you know, I don't know, whatever. Diabetes, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, depression, anxiety, joint pain, autoimmune disease, lupus, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, um, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Those are chronic lifestyle diseases turned on by your lifestyle, turned off by your lifestyle. Those are diseases that you weren't born with. Some people are born sick. Absolutely. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about all of us who were born completely healthy and turned on chronic lifestyle diseases, just like me, 24 years of seeing doctors chronic diarrhea I had, right? I had four colonoscopies before the age of 44 diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. And then I itched for years. And then I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and lupus in my thirties. And then I was depressed. Every bit of that is a chronic lifestyle disease. I am living proof. Whatever you turn on, you can turn off. I wrote about it right there in that book right there. If you haven't read it, you need to read it. I'll say that again. Whatever it is that you have turned on, I am living proof that you can turn off or dial it back at least to under the radar. Okay. Prevention. Prevention or management. If you already have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, you know, vascular um, vascular issues, all of that. My six steps to healing that I wrote the whole book on that I have done since 2010 with my patients. You have to eat well. You have to sleep well. You have to move well. You have to poop well. 
you have to de-stress well and you have to commune well. Those are my six steps. There's other things as well. And we're going to break it down tonight. We're going to start with supplements. So you all can take pictures if you want. I don't have anybody taking notes here, but whoever wants to can take notes in the in the comments section if you want. But we're going to start with some supplements. And here's what I want you to know. I own a supplement store. In fact, I think I own the best supplement store in Middle Tennessee. For sure, I own the best privately owned, you know, just small business supplement store. But all of these things that I'm going to talk about tonight, these are supplements. They are not substitutes. Okay. You cannot out supplement an inflammatory diet, a bad diet, too much stress, not sleeping, not eating well, not moving your body, right? Those are the, you can't out supplement that. Ah, hang on here. I'm moving my computer, all the things. Everything's falling apart. Ah, hold on. Hang on a second. My book is, I've got this janked up. If y'all can see me, I've got three books on top of my desk. I mean, it's just a mess. Um, so all that being said, you can't out supplement. I sell supplements. I sell the best supplements, I think, in the United States. Hands down, we do. We, we do all the research, but they're supplements. They're not substitutes. You've got to eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, de-stress well, commune well. But we're going to start with some things that we know we have decades of research on for cardiovascular disease, addressing inflammation and cardiovascular disease. Vitamin D3, one of the basics. Now, when COVID, now we've taken D3 for, for years. I have since 2010. I never took it before that. When COVID came around in 2019, 2020, I guess, that's when we found out the power of vitamin D3. D3, okay? The patients who had the lowest levels of vitamin D3 did the worst. Many died with COVID. We know that D3 is cardiovascular protective. Very few foods. We're going to combine supplements with foods very, because I would rather, I'd love to say supplements, but I would rather you get your supplements, get your nutrients from your diet. Very few foods have D3. Very few foods are naturally rich in vitamin D3. Okay. So the flesh <laughs> of Fatty fish. I love fatty fish, but I don't like eating the flesh, okay, of it. The flesh of fatty fish, fish liver oils, mm. smaller amounts of D3 are found in egg yolks. Well, I have a sensitivity to eggs, so I can't eat many egg yolks. Cheese and beef liver. Now, I love beef liver, and beef liver's got your iron in it. It's got your little bit of D3 in it. It's got all of your K27 in it, which we're going to talk, your liver organs. But most people have to take a vitamin D3. We do not, we do not metabolize it well from the sun. We have decades of research on surfers in Hawaii who have vitamin D deficiency, okay? If your doctor tells you that your vitamin D3 level is 35 and it's normal, it's perfect, it is not. It is not optimal. It is normal, but it is not optimal. So D3, I think most people could take 5,000 international units of D3 with K27, okay, in it. You always want D3 and K2 together. They work synergistically together and they help each other in your body, okay? Most people could take 5,000 of D3. I personally take 10,000 in the winter, and then I take 5,000 in the summer. And my D3 levels stay around 80 to 90. That is not too high. An optimal D3 level is going to be 60, 70, 80, maybe even 90. So D3 is a big deal for cardiovascular disease, helping to bring down inflammation in your body and boost your immune system. That's a cheap one. D3 with K2 is not very expensive and you take it every day, okay? Fish oil, some of my favorites, fish oils, and I'm going to talk to you about, this is my favorite. This is our wild caught omega. We private label it, okay? 
It's pre-digested, ready to go, one a day. What are the benefits of fish oil? Before we get into the foods that are going to have the highest amounts of omegas in them, right? Uh, Omega-3s, omega-6s. The benefits of fish oil brings down inflammation in your body. So it's anti-inflammatory. It is unbelievable for attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADD, ADHD. It's one of the first things your psychiatrist who diagnoses you should put you on. Fish oil, unbelievable for anxiety and depression. We need omegas in the brain for the brain to work beautifully. Also for Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. I'm a huge fan of omegas. Now, I would much rather you eat your fatty fish, right? Your mackerel, your salmon, your all those things, the trout, all the things. Um, wild caught only, cold water, wild caught, no farmed fish ever, ever. Just don't eat it if you have to eat farmed fish. Do not eat it, okay? Fish and seafood, right, are going to have um, your highest amounts of omegas, especially the cold water fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, tuna. Now, tuna is a big fish, and the bigger the fish, the higher the mercury level. So you have to weigh the risks and benefits. Herring and sardines. Jackson loves sardines. I have not gotten an acquired taste for them. I need to keep trying to eat them. I've never eaten a, um, a um, oh, good Lord, anchovy. I mean, a, a, a macro, like a little canned mackerels and all that. I've never eaten it, but I should try because they're high in omegas, okay? Plant oils, flaxseed oil has a lot of omegas in it as well. Nuts and seeds right here. I was at all these today. I did a video. I'll share it um, for y'all later. Um, this is almonds, pecans, and pistachio kernels raw. And it was like four bucks or something at all these. I'm a huge fan of all these. So you're going to get your, your omegas from your fatty fish, flaxseed oil, nuts, almonds, um, things like that. Okay. Such as flaxseed, chia seeds, and walnuts. Okay, I like, or who asked? Oh, Andrew, how much omega? I like a minimum of 1.3 grams, so 1,300 milligrams, 1 1.3 on up to 2.5 grams. I think this one is, this one is 1 1.3, actually, the wild caught omega. This one, this is a liquid fish oil that Britt loves, our health coach and supplement store uh, uh, manager. She loves this fish oil. It's 3,000 grams. So 3,000, I mean, uh, three grams, not 3,000 grams, 3,000 milligrams in one teaspoon. She says it tastes great. It's got uh, 47 servings in here. It's $59. This is from Designs for Health, the Omega Aval right here. It's a fantastic fish oil. But I love this wild caught omega that's pre digested, no burping. You could take one or two a day. It depends. You know, I go up to 2,000, 2,500 milligrams a day. I would split it up and take it with food if you can. If you're going to get that high dose, then I would split it up and do it like twice a day, 1,500 milligrams or so, um, twice a day. Those are your omegas, fatty fish. Um, Yes, you can get your uh, fish oil without being in a gel cap. Yes, you can. This is a fantastic one. We actually have it on the front page of our store. I'll share the link up here in a minute um, for you to look at it and see. Um, in fact, I'll do that right now for you guys. Oh, no, I won't. I don't have it with me. Oh, my Lord, Danny Williamson. What in the world is going on here? Um all right, we're talking fish oil. Oh, here we go. I got it for you guys. I'm going to put it here and then I can, um, I'll copy it and put it on here for you just so I don't forget tonight. Okay, there you go right there. All right, sorry about that. D3, omegas. Those are big deals for cardiovascular disease, bringing down inflammation, but you want a good fish oil. Here's a little, um, 
a little caveat on fish oil. Do not buy it. You don't have to buy it from me, clearly. Do not buy it from Costco, Sam's, Walmart, the dollar store, um, Trader Joe's even. You know, any of those places that don't store it correctly, Amazon for sure, that don't transport it correctly, that fish oil gets hot and cold on the docks, in the trucks, and it tastes rancid, right? And it's bad. If you burp your fish oil, then it's rancid. Most likely it's rancid. You can cut open the capsule and smell it and you'll be able to tell. Um, I don't know who this is. It says Facebook user for some reason. We're going to talk about the Pro Omega LDL. Yeah, it's fantastic. I don't have to take it because I don't have high cholesterol, but we're going to talk about it with the cholesterol. This is my number one, number one right there. D3, fish oil, vitamin K27. K27. What does K2 do? And we're talking K27, not K1, not K3. K27 literally tells calcium where to go in the arteries, the vessels, the capillaries, all of that, even the bones. It pulls calcium out of the arteries and lays it down on the bones to make the bones strong. Because remember, we don't use calcium. We do not. In fact, I think um, Australia has basically outlawed calcium. Calcium builds up in the arteries, creating cardiovascular disease. We do not use calcium supplements. Say this is calcium. Don't you dare. If your doctor tells you to take calcium, then they are practicing decades behind the research. It's 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 shame. I don't sell a single calcium in the office. Now, there's a couple of osteoporosis supplements I have in my vitamin C. There's a little bit of calcium in them, but not by itself. We do not sell calcium. K27. Let me tell you about K27, guys. Um, it is unbelievable for cardiovascular health. What foods are going to have the highest amount of, cal of K27? Does anybody know the number one? Oh, my gosh. And I cannot drag myself. I just can't force myself to eat it. I, I can't. It's natto or natto, natto, uh, N-A-T-T-O. It's a Japanese dish. And what it is, it's made from fermented soybeans. It's stringy and sticky when you pull it up. Ugh, I don't know. If you like um, uh, natto, let me know on here. Tell me if you like it or not. Um, it's, it's, absolutely the highest amount of K27 that we have out there. Also, eel. Isn't that something? Most vitamin K2 sources are animal-based, but eel offers a seafood alternative. So if you like sushi, if you like eel, then there you go. You're going to get some K27. Cheese, beef liver. So K2 is mainly found, you've got your soy there, you've got your natto, but mainly found in organ meats, beef liver. Tongue, kidney, spleen, heart, things like that. And I love beef liver, but I don't eat it every day. In fact, I don't even, even eat it every month and I should put it on my rotation. Chicken has got K27. Grass-fed butter, K27. Some sauerkraut does. And egg yolks. There we go back to the egg yolks again. Remember, they've got the D3, a little bit of D3 in it. And they've also got a little bit of K27 in it. Now, we use megaquinone. I think they're the best. There's multiple ones out there, but this is Microbiome Labs, the people who make our mega support. They do a fantastic, fantastic, ultra absorbable vitamin K27. It's a complex. It's got K2, K1, a little bit of magnesium and a little bit of zinc. And the research shows that those together work better in your body. So I'm a big fan of this one. Also, if you have osteoporosis, you definitely need to take K27. And they say if you've ever taken calcium, then you definitely need K27 because it pulls calcium out of the arteries, lays it down on the bones, makes the bones stronger. Okay. So that's D3. Those are basics. Fish oil, basics. Those are two of my five um, standards that I think people have. Then you have your K27. Now we have, this is one of my favorites. 
post COVID. I did not take it prior to me getting COVID back in 2022, no, 2021. And I should have, because I'm over the age of 50. Who takes CoQ10? Hit your heart buttons if you take CoQ10. This, I missed the boat on. CoQ10 is phenomenal for post-COVID energy. Holy cow. And that's how I got turned on to it. Not for the heart stuff. I should have been on it for heart stuff forever because my whole family dies of heart disease. CoQ10 builds energy in the cells. It builds in, in, in mitochondria. Remember the powerhouse of the cell, the mighty mitochondria, right? In the, in the center of the cell. CoQ10 helps with the mitochondria. It's also breast cancer protective. We've got research on patients with breast cancer having low levels of, cardi of CoQ10. Unbelievable for cardiovascular disease. If you or someone you love is on a statin drug to lower cholesterol, like atorvastatin, you know, Lipitor, uh, Retorvastatin, any of the statin medications, you have got to be put on CoQ10. If your doctor did not start you on CoQ10, with your statin drug, then they did a real disservice for you. Yes, this is list. Uh, this is recorded. It is recorded. It is recorded and it's on YouTube forever and ever and ever on our YouTube channel. CoQ10 is phenomenal for energy. I take it every day. I take 100 milligrams twice a day. I always get it in in the morning. Sometimes I don't get it in in the afternoon or if it's too late, um, I end up not taking it at night because it does give you energy. So it's multiple, multiple reasons to use CoQ10. Organ meats are going to have the highest levels of CoQ10. Um, animal organ meats. Fish. Fish will have high levels of CoQ10. I was reading about CoQ10 here. I'm just going to read this to you. CoQ10 is present in every cell throughout the body, mostly concentrated in the viable, or I'm sorry, the vital organs like your heart, your lungs, your kidney, your liver. This means that animal organ meat has the highest amounts of CoQ10 per 100 grams. Also fish as well. I'm telling you, CoQ10 is one of the best supplements that I've ever taken. And I, I will take this one until I die just because I'm getting older. Even if we're just, even if we're not on a statin drug, I'm not on a statin drug. If you're above the age of CoQ10, your CoQ10 levels drop drastically every year. Kind of like our muscle mass does every year, like 8% or something. It's ridiculous. Okay. D3, fish oil, K27. CoQ10. These are all things that help with cardiovascular disease and decreasing inflammation in your body. PQQ. So CoQ10 and PQQ are two products that I did not take until 2021 when I got COVID and I had, I didn't have long, long COVID, but I was so exhausted that I, I couldn't even move. I was so tired. So that's when I did my research and we have all those videos on long COVID and COVID fatigue. But I started PQQ then. This is one of those products that I will take until I die because of the energy. Holy cow. Co or PQQ builds energy in the cells. Studies have shown that it is, it's basically a longevity vitamin. So as we age, right, um, it's a longevity vitamin. It may lower the risk of disease during aging, possibly by stimulating important cellular activities, just like that mitochondria that CoQ10 does. Now, how are we going to get this in food, right? Like CoQ10, mainly vital organs, liver, beef, I mean, things like beef, liver, things like that, tongue, heart. PQQ, it's not in many foods. Kiwi green peppers, celery, parsley, spinach, papaya. Those are basically it. There's not, there's not a ton. Uh, it's all vegetables, fruit and vegetables right there. That's it. But PQQ twice a day. 
So this is 300 milligrams. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 20 milligrams. This one also has a little bit of rhodiola in it, which I think is probably another reason it gives you such great energy. Rhodiola we give to the Russian cosmonauts going into space. They did a whole study on rhodiola with um, long-term stress. Rhodiola helps give you energy. It's an adaptogen. It's actually an herb. Um, 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 and it gives you um, um, energy, prolonged energy. So PQQ and rhodiola in here, phenomenal. This is part of my long COVID protocol, guys. Um, AJ, um, um, it's it's on our on the link there under um, COVID. It'll be under COVID on the supplement store. This is a huge piece of our post COVID protocol. But I just learned about it being beneficial for cardiovascular health. So why not kill two birds with one stone? Build some energy and also help with your cardiovascular health. Arteracil. Does anybody watching take arteracil? Now, arteracil is newer to the market. This is the seaweed, the seaweed from the Mediterranean. So we have no other way to get this. This is a specific seaweed from the bottom of the ocean, from the ocean that is only harvested by the natives out, I mean, way out in the Mediterranean. I see it. I don't know if it's Mediterranean. It could be any of those seas over there. I'm not sure. That's why it's expensive. That bottle's a hundred. $99 right there, arteriosil. I have a whole video on this as well on our Instagram. It supports the structure and the normal functions of the endothelial glycocalyx. So that basically what that means is that keeps your vessels, the endothelium inside the vessels, the cell, the arteries, the, the capillaries, keeps them supple, helping to decrease uh, your chances of building up plaque in the vessels and the arteries. It's pretty fascinating. I don't notice any difference taking it. And I did start taking it when we started carrying it because two, three years ago, I went to a Designs for Health conference in Florida that Dr. Mark Houston was speaking at. Mark Houston is the big doctor here who deals with cardiovascular disease here in Nashville. And he did an entire lecture on arteriosil and the benefits of arteriosil and how he starts his patients on it. So I started carrying it after that. And I started taking it, especially with COVID. And we know the cardiovascular troubles that patients who've had COVID um, have. So it's I don't know. I started my dad on it because he had a he had a heart attack. I take it. My family falls over dead of cardiovascular disease. They don't get cancer. Um, it's two a day. But again, you're not going to get this because it's a specific seaweed that is deep, deep down and apparently very hard to harvest. So you would have to actually take our tyrosyl or not take it at all because you can't get it in the food. But it's really great for cardiovascular disease and suppling the vessels, keeping them soft and pliable and not stiff and rigid because we know that that contributes to cardiovascular disease. By the time they're stiff and rigid, we're in deep trouble. Trouble. All right, tell me this. Do you all take nitric oxide? Hit your heart buttons if you take a nitric oxide supplement or you take or you know about your nitric oxide levels, you've actually tested your levels and you know where your levels are. Nitric oxide is something new to me. It's, we've only used it for a year. Whoa. Not only is it incredible for cardiovascular disease. Holy moly. Jackson takes it for working out. So what does nitric oxide do, right? Nitric oxide is a gas. We make it in our own bodies, but it's very short-lived. Boom, boom, boom. We make it in our bodies from nitrates and nitrites that are found in our foods naturally. Nitrates convert to nitrites. You don't have to remember that. The best way to get nitric oxide in your body is to eat leafy greens. And I'm talking the darker, the better. Spinach, collards, kale, um, 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 what's that one? Swiss chard, arugula, those are your best sources of nitric oxide, right? Plus things like beets, cabbage, 
cauliflower, carrots, broccoli, any of your green vegetables or your cruciferous vegetables or beets. So you'll get into those super beets. Well, you got to be careful with all of that. Yes, they may help with some nitric oxide levels, but when we test people, because every box of this has um, um, test strips in it, when we test people, their nitric oxide levels are not super great when they're just taking a beet supplement. Now, this does have beet in it, but it's got potassium nitrate. Nitrate, remember, converts to nitrites, which, uh, which is your nitric oxide. Heart disease lowers blood pressure beautifully. Also, blood flow, blood flow to the brain because it, it opens up these arteries and vessels and capillaries. Erectile dysfunction right here. If you're having trouble in the bedroom, if you're having erectile dysfunction, if you've got a blood flow problem to the penis, then you have a blood flow problem to the brain and every vessel and artery in your body. Think about this. You weren't born with erectile dysfunction. This is also phenomenal for women who have a hard time having an orgasm. It brings blood flow to the clitoris. So I've got patients who have beautiful cardiovascular health. They don't have any heart disease at all that they're aware of, but they have issues with erectile dysfunction or problems having orgasms or whatever. Uh, this I've got a patient who said, he told me, he said, I wish I had an IV. In fact, he told me, I actually texted the CEO of Berkeley Life the other day. The same patient told me, he said, if I was of the age to have children, I would name my son Berkeley <laughs> because this is from Berkeley Life. So this is only available through healthcare practitioners. It is hands down phenomenal that nitric oxide is excellent. If you've got high blood pressure, all right, it'll help bring down uh, your blood pressure. Viagra, this, this is basically Viagra. Viagra was originally designed as a cardiovascular drug to lower blood pressure. Did you know that? It was, it was um, created at, at Vanderbilt, actually. Then they realized every man got an erection with it. And there's way more money in erectile dysfunction than the West Cardiovascular. Or, or actually, we didn't have an ED drug on the market when Viagra was launched. So there we go. Um, now, you know the history of Viagra and nitric oxide. It won the Nobel Prize like 1990 something. I don't know. This discovery of nitric oxide. So this is a big deal right here. It's on our front page as well. Um, and you can read all about it. I also did a Sunday night service with the CEO of this company. So you will learn all about the benefits of nitric oxide, but eat your green leafy vegetables. That's going to raise your nitric oxide levels naturally. Okay. Garlic. I forgot to bring garlic in. We have Allison at the office, um, which is the active constituent of garlic. Garlic, good Lord, lowers your blood pressure, helps with cardiovascular disease, or just eat a bunch of garlic. Garlic is fantastic for cardiovascular um, issues. Oh man, magnesium. I left mine in the bathroom. Daggone it. Okay, magnesium's up next. I'm not going to leave you and go get my magnesium. Magnesium glycinate chelate malate. Let me tell you about magnesium. Magnesium lowers blood pressure. Helps with restless legs. Constipation. Anxiety depression, right? Migraine headaches. I mean, it's got like 300 functions in your body. Magnesium does. It is unbelievable. The majority of us are deficient in magnesium. What foods are going to have the highest amounts of magnesium? Pumpkin seeds, 156 milligrams per serving. That's huge. That's more than one of my magnesium capsules. They're 125 milligrams. Chia seeds, 111 milligrams. Almonds, cashews. I can't eat cashews. I have a cashew problem, right? Spinach, black beans. I just had a whole half a can of black beans before we came on here today. Soy, soy milk, edamame. I'm not against soy. Soy is not the devil, but it needs to be organic, non-GMO, all of that. Soy is a miracle food, people. If it were the devil, then 
you know, all the Asians who eat a tremendous amount of soy, they'd be in deep trouble and they're not. Okay. So just make sure your soy is clean. Um, nuts. Nuts are going to have a lot of magnesium. Brown rice, salmon has 26 milligrams of magnesium in it. And dairy products, I don't eat yogurt. I don't eat milk. I'm not a fan of dairy for human beings. I'm just not. The research is there, but it's got a lot. Avocados, one avocado has 22 milligrams. Bananas has 32 milligrams of magnesium. So if you want to get your magnesium from your diet, you're going to have to eat a whole lot of these things, but you definitely can do it. Also, dark chocolate has high magnesium in it, but I'm a big fan of a great magnesium glycinate. Chelate, malate, not magnesium citrate, not magnesium magnesium oxide. Okay. If you're taking calm, all right, that's fine, but it's magnesium citrate. We want a magnesium that's literally going to get into the cells and do all those incredible things that magnesium was designed to do. Before we started monkeying with the earth and you know, turning our food, our crops over so fast and all this and feeding our animals, all this crap in the feedlots. We had great magnesium levels. We had incredible omega levels. We had incredible, you know, levels of everything in our body. But now our food supply just stinks, absolutely stinks. So I'm a big fan of magnesium. I think it's it's really good. All right. Somebody mentioned uh, Nordic LDL. So if you have high cholesterol, right, we're going to treat cholesterol and high blood pressure and all that the same. We're going to clean up our diet. We're going to take our D3 and our fish oils and our magnesium and, you know, whatever, whatever it is that, that you want to take. And you're going to eat a heart healthy diet. This is the best fish oil on the market right here for cholesterol. I'm, I don't generally sell things that are sold other places, uh, but Nordic Naturals is available everywhere. You do not want to buy it on Amazon. Just know that or Costco. Get it when we know it's going to be handled correctly and traveling correctly. This fish oil I found, about, I found out from a patient about. Her ophthalmologist saw cholesterol when he did her eye exam. And he told her, he said, I need you to get this fish oil, whatever. And she was buying it from him and she wanted to buy it from me. So that's a long way around. So I start selling it now. We can't keep it in. Well, half the time because it goes on back order. But this is a magnesium that has, I mean, I'm sorry, a fish oil that has red yeast rice, 1,800 milligrams of red yeast rice in it. That's what statin drugs are derived from. Most pharmaceuticals come from nature initially. And then now they've been chemical, chemically altered so that they're no longer natural at all. But satin drugs originally derived, and they do, from red yeast rice, has um, fish oil in it, EPA, DHA, and CoQ10. Only 30 milligrams of CoQ10 in it. But I'm going to tell you right now, this fish oil, as whoever said, I can't remember who said it, it's hands down the best for lowering cholesterol. Lowering the total cholesterol, lowering the triglycerides, lowering the LDL, as well as raising the HDL. Okay. Pro Omega LDL. It's on the front page until February 29th for Heart Health Month on our online store. So you can look at all this on the online store just to look at it if you want to just see what I'm talking about. If you're not able to take pictures or take notes. Okay. This combo right here for patients, right? If you're going to go about it supplement wise and diet wise to lower cholesterol, this, this combo right here works beautifully. Lipid factors, Dr. Dan Kalb taught me about in 2010. I have used it with patients for 14 years now. This has niacin, choline, red yeast rice, methionine, taurine, dandelion, N acetylcysteine. CoQ10, uh, polycosinol in it. I mean, it's got all kinds of things in it. You have to take four of these a day, but I am telling you, it works great. This is Lipid Factors, Comprehensive Blood Lipid Supports from Numedica, and it works. That combined with a really great fish oil, and you're not going to overdose. You wouldn't actually need an extra CoQ10 if you took these two things together because they both have CoQ10 in it. So that's a great way to lower cholesterol, but you also have to eat well. 
sleep well. You got to move your body, right? You got to decrease stress. If you have high blood pressure, you're going to eat a Mediterranean diet, right? You're going to exercise. You're going to definitely take nitric oxide and magnesium. This, this formula has been around forever and I've used it forever, just as long as I have lipid factors, actually. They've renamed it a couple of times, Hypertension Supreme. And all it is is Benito peptide powder and grape seed extract. And it works beautifully with helping to lower blood pressure. So, you know, blood pressure needs to be way below 120 over 80, way below, preferably like 110 over, you know, 78, 80, you know, way below 120 over 80. Don't let it creep up. If your blood pressure is 130 over 90, you are hypertensive. Just know that. You're not pre-hypertensive. You have hypertension. Again, Cardiovascular disease kills one in three women. Postmenopausal, our blood pressure starts to go through the roof. Our cholesterol starts to go through the roof because we don't have our hormones anymore. So if you're not on bioidentical hormones, right, you're going to have to make sure that you do everything in your power to help lower your cholesterol and lower your blood pressure. All right. That's a basket full of supplements right there. And there's one more. Do you eat enough fiber? Do you know they, they say that only like 3%, something like 3% or less people every day get enough fiber in their diet daily? Well, fiber will help lower cholesterol beautifully because it pulls that cholesterol out of your system and you poop it out. This is a phenomenal fiber, wild and lean fiber. And it is uh, konjac, konjac. Three grams, three grams in six capsules. So I tell people split it, do three capsules, you know, before you eat a big meal and then three capsules at another big meal. Or you can take all six at one time, but you could have some gut bloating and things like that. Fiber is a big deal for weight loss, huge for cholesterol, right? Big deal for pooping. If you're not pooping, maybe it's not magnesium, maybe it's not dehydration maybe it's you don't have enough fiber every day because again, less than 2%, I think it's less than 2% of the American population gets enough fiber every day. So this wild and lean fiber is really good. It really is. Um, we private label it from Zymogen. It is a fantastic fiber that really helps you stay full and combine that with a berberine or something. Uh, boy, you talk about losing some weight. It's a big deal. So there was a study last year that showed that eating your meals, so the timing of when you eat, could help decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease. It was 103,000 participants. This was a European study. That's a huge study. It was seven years. Came out last year. Eating past 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning, so eating your first meal past 9 to 10 in the morning, can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Eating your last meal after 9 p.m. increases your risk by more than 28% for brain diseases like a stroke. Every hour after 8 p.m., the risk gets more and more and more if you eat your last meal. Eating your first and last meals earlier decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease. We need at least 12. So 12, what you need is at least 12 hours of fasting. So 12 to 14 hours of fasting. So stop eating. So it's almost seven. Stop eating at 7 p.m. and then eat again at 9 a.m would be the recommendation. We can all do that. We can all do that. The timing of your meals is important. Now, a lot of people intermittent fast. I know that. This is one study. I don't know if there are more studies. I'm sure there are. But I think the timing, I think we eat too much and we eat too often. But I do think that you do. Breakfast is a big deal. 
It really is. Um, and I know some people say they feel better if they don't eat breakfast, and I get that. So maybe that's good for you. All right. But we know that a Mediterranean type diet, even a vegan diet, if we're dealing with cardiovascular disease, you know, and I'm not vegan, I'm not, I'm not vegan and I'm not vegetarian. But today I made a vegan meal. It was all grain. It was a, a turmeric rice. I made turmeric rice. I poured turmeric in it. That's how I made it. Black beans. Um, cauliflower, broccoli, I roasted onions, and then it was sweet potatoes. Dang, it was good. Garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper. 100% plant-based. It was really good, and I'm full. So I got a lot of fiber in that meal, okay? Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to take some supplements. We're going to eat a clean diet. Clean diet, okay? What about... You know what we're going to do? I think next week we're going to talk about testing because this is too much to go into testing. I was going to talk about testing today, but next week we're going to talk about testing, even though it won't be Heart Health Month. This is this should be every day. OK, we're going to talk about what blood work and what imaging testing you need to have done. I think this is enough because I want to a a answer questions for you guys. Um Definitely. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do that. So the bottom line is this cardiovascular disease is preventable. I don't care what your genetics say, right? Your genes load the gun, but your environment pulls the trigger. Don't ever forget that. You do not have to be your jet genetics. Just because your mom may have died of cardiovascular disease or had a heart attack when she was 35, and your dad, you know, had a stroke. You don't have to. We know what the research says. You do not have to have the genetics or you don't have to have the expression of your genes that your parents gave you. Always know that. If you were born without heart disease, you do not have to have heart disease. If you don't hear anything else, if you don't didn't hear anything about supplements, if you didn't hear anything about eating your nuts and your diet and all that, Always know if you were born healthy, you do not have to live sick. Okay. This is preventable. This is reversible. This is a marathon. It's not two weeks of trying to do better. This is a friggin' marathon. This is the rest of your life. If you're 50 years old, then you better get busy because chances are you've got more years behind you than you do in front of you. So you've got to get out there and eat a clean diet. you got to start making changes. Say this is a bunch of food, processed food. When you run out of all this processed package bag food, guess what? You bring in one ingredient, whole God made foods. All right. Start making changes now. I don't have any tolerance for a kitchen full of bagged processed food. Don't tell me you don't know better. It's real simple. To buy an avocado. It's real simple to buy an orange or an apple. Everything does not have to be organic. All right. It's real simple to buy some broccoli. Well, I don't like the way it tastes. Well, you know what? Figure out a way to make it taste good. That's what olive oil, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic, garlic powder, turmeric spices are all for, right? To make things taste better. So I, I, I'm pretty adamant about stuff like this. Okay. Eat earlier. No eating or snacking after dark. The sun is down. Don't you be eating a bunch of nuts now. Even if they are healthy, the sun is down. Stop eating after dark and then eat breakfast 12 to 14 hours later. My six steps, you know them. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, de-stress well, commune well. Stay hydrated, people. Drink your water. That's not water, but drink your water. All right. Half your body weight. That's going to lower your blood pressure right there. Read books. Listen to books like How Not to Die. That's a vegan book. Again, I'm not vegan, but the research is incredible in it. How Not to Die. Mark Hyman's got so many books out there, right? Grain Brain. Um, Bill Davis. He's a cardiologist. Re read and listen to every book he ever wrote. Um, Mark Hyman. Hyman Perlmutter. Dr. Perlmutter. Amazing books. Do your research, all right? I am living proof you can turn this around, people. All right, let's ask some, let's answer some questions. What type of magnesium? You bet. I said it, Andrew. Um, magnesium glycinate, 
chelate malate. So what I use, it's in a big bottle like this, and I just left it in my bathroom. I'm uh, so mad. Um, and I, I take 300 to 500 milligrams at night. Take your magnesium at night. Most people do because it'll make you fatigued. It's a smooth muscle relaxer. So I'm not a fan of citrate or oxide at all, unless you're extremely constipated. Okay, that's when I take it. I take mine at bedtime right there, Andrew. There it is. Take a picture of that right there. That's what we use. Mm -hmm. um, iron is crazy low from getting COVID as it utilizes iron. That's exactly right. So stop drinking black tea. Black tea inhibits iron absorption and that's drinking hot tea as well. So black tea and iron don't like each other. Black tea will eat up your iron. So that's that's a little pearl. Uh, cook in an iron skillet. Black strap molasses. Black strap molasses. It's not that good sweet molasses. That'll help raise iron. Yellow dock root will. Liquid chlorophyll will also help raise iron. Um, of course, spinach, your meat, your meats are, are going to have iron in it if you eat meat. Um, and you can also take some iron, but you also have to be careful with iron. You don't want to get too much. It can also um, cause some inflammation. I mean, iron is a little bit inflammatory. Well, yes, I sell all these and I'm not sure what um what you were talking about there but i i sell and research the brands that i think are the best put a lot of research a lot of research into picking out supplements but i don't want you to think you have to buy everything from me but um it's good stuff we also have a subscribe and save so you save 10 percent off the top if you subscribe and save every two months three months six months but you got to click the button when you're ordering absolutely it's recorded and it's on um, Inst uh, YouTube, Facebook Live. Oh, Instagram, Inst YouTube, Facebook Live. That makes no sense. It's on my YouTube channel, Danny Williamson Wellness. It's also on Facebook, but it'll be harder to find um, once we're finished here. But if you don't follow us on Instagram, I need you to follow us tonight, please. Um, oh, Kimberly, okay, you're my Facebook user. Such good info. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yes, I love the Pro Omega as well. Um, I did put the link for the supplement store in here. A couple of you were asking about it. I'll put it again. All right, guys, let me tell you. Next week, what we'll do is we will talk about testing, testing for cardiovascular disease. Um, and then we'll go from there. Let me see what this is. I know someone who has the gene that makes you more susceptible to cancer. That's right. How can you turn that around and not have cancer as those before you? That's exactly right. Don't express the genes. Everything I just talked about, Kayla, everything. Clean diet. Um, more vegetables than meat for darn sure with that, with that gene right there. Um, a very clean diet. Decrease the inflammation. No alcohol. You need to be a teetotaler on that one. Because alcohol is sugar and it feeds cancer. Stress, stress will kill you. Decreasing your stress. There's a book called The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. I actually had her on my Sunday night service. Dr. Nasha Winters, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. Read it. It is absolutely the best book you'll ever read on cancer. She was given three or four months to live at age 19 with stage four ovarian cancer. She's 50 something years old now. She's a buddy of mine and she is incredible. Um, we also offer the gallery test, the gallery cancer screening test, but it's expensive. It's about $700, $800. Uh, you can call the office. We have it. We don't have anything to do with the price. That is their price. You can have the blood drawn at the office. It looks at 50 plus cancers in your body. It looks at the methylation signals in your body. It won the time in invention of the year in 2022. It is a phenomenal uh, test. We only screen for five cancers, colon, lung, prostate, breast, and um, cervical cancer. That's it. So this looks at 50 plus cancers. It catches cancers at stage one, stage two, stage three, where you've got a chance to live. And I'm telling you, Kay, you are not hopeless. Do not say that. Delete the comment. 
I don't know how to delete it. I can't delete it on here, but I can hide it for crying out loud. Um, you are not going to say that you are not hopeless. Bloating, totally different subject, but digestive enzymes and a probiotic and chew your food. So take an amazing digestive enzyme. I like Digestzyme um, before you eat the biggest meal, right? So it may be two biggest meals of the day. It's going to break down fat, protein, and carbohydrates. But you also have to chew your food like there's no tomorrow. So you decrease the bloating, the gas, the gurgling by chewing your food until it's liquid and taking a digestive enzyme. Okay. Um, all right, guys. I'm, I'm running over. I was going to try to keep this at 30 minutes and by guinea, I did not. But I want to tell you um, right here, every single one of you that listened tonight, I need you to do me a favor because we are not winning. And if you're still listening, I need you to vote tonight for the Sizzle Award right there. We are nominated in two categories, Best Integrative Medicine and Best Health and Wellness. The supplement store is Best Health and Wellness. That's Wild and Well Wellness Emporium, just like the name of the book. And then, of course, Integrative Family Medicine and Best um, Integrative Medicine. And I would love to win the Sizzle Award this year. It takes about 15 minutes to vote. It's a pain in the butt, but I wish that you would um, do that for me. OK, I'm the only single mom business out there that's nominated and um I would love it if you guys would vote. Voting ends Tuesday night. No, I'm sorry, Wednesday night. So if you could vote tonight would be great after this. I would love it. Many of you have asked about where's the CBD on our online store and our wild intimate oil that it blew out the door. We got in trouble for selling it online on our Shopify, our CBD products and the wild intimate oil. We had to take it off. You can use the chat button and still order. We will have to manually do it, but we had to remove it from Shopify, remove it from our online store because they were going to close us down. And uh, we didn't know we learned a um, we learned a very valuable lesson there. And we've got to figure out how to do it because we've been shipping it all over the country. Candy, thank you. And yes, so I will tell you all this. Also, those of you that are still listening. I had a endometrial biopsy on Thursday and I guess it freaked people out when I shared the video because I didn't tell them why I was having it, but I did say postmenopausal bleeding. I was bleeding for a week while I was in New York City. Y'all don't need to know this. This is more information you need to know, but I had an endometrial biopsy, which is no fun. That's where they go in the uterus and they punch it and they, get, they biopsy it and pull it out. It was negative, negative for cancer. Also had an ultrasound negative. No, nothing. So we think it's just my bioidentical hormones woke my ovaries up and I'm youthful. I don't look youthful. I look like I need a facelift. But anyway, um, thank you for asking, Candy. And thank you for voting. I need all of you to vote. I would hate to lose by one vote or two votes because it's just crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, all right, guys. I appreciate you. Follow us on Instagram. Vote for us for the Sizzle Awards. I want to go this year. And I hope that we can win both awards. It would be fantastic. It's not the end of the world. If we don't win, we know we're good. But next week, we are going to talk about cardiovascular testing for heart disease. Well, just testing in general that you need to have done. Yes, yeah, Cindy, that was a good, good news. Um, thank you. Thank you, guys. Click the link, vote for us, and just don't cuss me out when you're voting because it does take forever. So, but, and because you have to vote for every single person out there, but listen, whatever you've turned on, you can turn off. I'm living proof. All right, people have a fantastic Sunday night. Go eat, go eat more vegetables than you do meat. All right. But you don't have to be vegan. Good Lord. No, I'm not vegan, but I think we need to eat more vegetables. And we need to move our body more and we need to drink more water and we need to eat more nuts and we need to eat more fruit. And don't worry about the sugar content of natural fruit. Oh, I forgot to tell you all. Look here. I've got my continuous glucose monitor. Let's see how it is right now. Um, um, I just, you know, I just ate before I came in here. So let me see. Oh. <gasps> 
to 128. What in the world? Well, I just ate. So that's a little higher than I like it. So looky there, 128. So this is interesting because I ate all vegan. There was no like animal protein in it, right? And my blood sugar is a little bit high. Good Lord, nothing's easy. Bleeding, blood sugar's high. Had to, I got cataracts. I, I forgot to tell you all that, but he says everyone has cataracts. Everyone has cataracts. As you get older, 100% of everybody's going to have cataracts. So good gosh. All right, guys, I got to go. I got to go figure out why my blood sugar is higher than I like it. <laughs> have your doctor order you a continuous glucose monitor right there. I got the cheap Libre 2. It's all the same. Don't worry about getting a fancy one. Um, and if your insurance pays for it, do it. All right. All right, Cindy. I love you too. So <laughs> good Lord, I'm a mess. Oh, okay. Go vote, please. Please go vote. Please go vote tonight. Lord Jesus, help us win. I would love to win. If we don't, it's okay. But I'd love to.